We start getting answers about the latest when it comes to the coronavirus from a local expert. We're joined on the phone by Dr. Erica Hamilton, a microbiologist from UMass Amherst. Dr. Hamilton, as always, thank you so much for joining us today. It's good to be here today. But I want to start with what a lot of people are talking about today. Indoor dining, that begins today with precautions, of course. All right, so a lot of questions here. We're starting to feel more comfortable about dining outdoors. We've been doing that for a little while now. Now that we take it inside, what do we need to know? When you go to do, when you go to out to eat, um, there's going to be a lot of changes. So for, the first thing you need to do is make sure you bring your mask and your hand sanitizer with you. You will most likely not be allowed in without a mask. Once you do get to the restaurant, the restaurants are going to be functioning at a limited capacity. So depending on what time you get to the restaurant, you may not be able to get a seat because they can only let in a certain number of patrons at a time. Parties at each table must be six people or less. So make sure that when you go, if you have a large family or you want to take some people out to you want to meet some friends to go out to eat, you've got to have it at six people or less. When you get in, you will have to wear your mask until you get to your table, at which point you can take it off. Um, menus will be different. You either access them electronically or you'll be given a disposable paper one, so that will be different. Make sure you are prepared for that. And then things like how you walk through the restaurant to get to the bathroom and how the server interacts with you will be different. So this is, it'll be nice to be able to go back out to eat again, but there will be a lot of changes and just go prepared, go with the thought in mind that I have to have my mask. I should bring my hand sanitizer and that I might not get a seat right away that I may have to wait because the restaurant already has enough people in it. And then things like the menu, the different types of menus, just be prepared to, to have to deal with all those things. Best advice, call ahead on that to make sure that you're not waiting there. All right, also, uh, Dr. Nail Salons, they are also opening today. Now, what risks do they present with COVID-19? We were talking during the break, and, you know, that's a tough one. That's, you know, how, when you're in such close proximity and you're hand-to-hand, -hand, literally, what do we need to know? In a situation like this, you really do want people wearing masks. Because not only are you facing each other, but the manicurist needs to get pretty close to you in order to do your nails and do them properly. So the, the risk is pretty high for this activity. So when you go, make sure that you have your mask on. Make sure the person doing your nails has the mask on and that other people in the facility are wearing their masks. Make sure that you can wash your hands or use hand sanitizer. And this would be a really good time to talk to your manicurist about what is being cleaned in between uses. Now, their instruments are supposed to be either disposable or cleaned anyway, but what about the chair that you're sitting in? What about the table itself? What are they doing to clean it? So those are some things to keep in mind. All right, a lot of questions armed with some good information. And also, I wanted to ask you about Massachusetts. The cases spiked here in April. We appear to be on the right trajectory. Now, why did it take longer for other states to start seeing their surges? Particularly, we had a report on just a little while ago, Florida, they are considered the new epicenter. Why such a delay? Well, that is because Massachusetts got hit uh, first. So Massachusetts, New York, Washington, and uh, places like New Jersey and Connecticut were hit earlier than other states. And this, we actually know what caused it. There was an executive-level international meeting of a Cambridge-based biotechnology company back in February. And because it was international, people from Europe came to this conference, and it was held in Massachusetts. And what happened was that they brought the COVID with them. And then all of these executives at this conference passed the disease on to other folks in Massachusetts, and it, and it got spread before we even realized what was happening. So we got hit first because of attendance at this particular conference that happened in Massachusetts. All right. Well, Dr. Fingers crossed that, that our numbers in Massachusetts continue on the downward trend. So, Dr. Hamilton, we want to thank you very much, as always, for joining us today. We look forward to talking with you more and getting some of your insights in the coming days. And be sure to tune in each weekday at 1230 as we have a doctor to answer your questions about the ongoing global pandemic.